Amitabha Buddha. Hello everyone. So in our last two videos, we talk about the three poisons, greed, anger, and ignorance briefly. And also in the last video, we look deeper into greed and the five desires. So in this video, I'd like to explore a bit more about the mental defilement of anger, the poison of anger, and see what caused anger and most importantly, how we can overcome it in our life. So in fact, all these poisons, all these mental defilements are also illusions, which means that they don't have a fixed permanent nature attached to it. So if we think about it, when we become angry, we don't become angry forever, right? It's just for a period of time we become angry after we throw our tangents and then perhaps the next moment we did not know for exactly what reasons we were angry. You know, we would even laugh about it. So actually all these mental defilements and all these emotions, they're all temporary, transient in nature. So that is what we call illusions in Buddhism. Imagine the true nature of the mind or the true nature of the heart. So in Buddhism, the mind is really the heart. So imagine the true nature of the heart is like the peaceful ocean, whereas the waves are like the mental defilements, the emotions. So the waves are not really the ocean itself. Although they come from the ocean, they do not represent the whole of the ocean. So the waves are constantly changing and they're not permanent. And that is why they are illusions. And we as the ocean really should not be identified with those waves, with these illusional waves. And that is why the awakened ones, they will not be attached to these mental defilements. They will not be attached to this kind of emotions. But whereas we ordinary beings, we like to be attached to the illusions of all these different mental defilements. So we often identify ourselves with our anger, with our greed, with our attachment, with our ignorance. And this is what makes us suffer. So let's look at anger. What caused anger? It's exactly the opposite of what caused our greed and craving. So in the last video, when we talk about the cause for greed, we have this attachment, this craving and greed towards the things we like. But whereas for the things we completely dislike, then we can be angry of it. For instance, if we see something that we think are just ugly, or we hear some noises that we really feel very much annoyed, or we taste some food that just tastes absolutely disgusting, when we are in situations that we think are unfavorable, that we dislike, that we didn't want to be in. So all this could give rise to anger or hatred. And this poison is actually dangerous. It's perhaps the most dangerous out of all the three poisons. And it's also the most obvious. So say with greed, sometimes when we are greedy of something, other people may not know, right? For instance, if I have this craving for this delicious apple pie on the table, I want to eat more. But you know, this is just a thought in my mind that other people may not know. It can be a bit subtle and maybe less obvious for other people to find out. But if we become angry with someone, we become angry with something, it is very obvious. It rides all over on our face, right? If we have these thoughts of anger, you know, this emotion of anger, it's like we're gonna explode and other people will surely know how our energy, right? We really feel this tense energy, this fierce energy of anger. When a person is angry, he or she really feels like he's burning by the fire, the fire of anger. And that is why anger corresponds to the hellish ram. The thoughts of anger is really like fire and that is why for the beings who fall down to the hellish ram, they really feel like they're being burned by fire. And in the hellish ram, you can see a lot of fires. So that is why this is really the most dangerous poisons out of all. So anger can really cause a lot of problems in our life and also in the society and in the world, such as arguments with others, domestic violence, or just violence in general in the society. And in serious cases, murder, like how many murders in the news that we see every day were actually caused by the thoughts of anger. 
and even in more serious cases, it could lead to war. So all the wars in this world were actually caused by the thoughts of anger initially. On the surface, it could be like all kinds of reason, but if we look deeper, it's really due to the anger, the attachment to these thoughts of anger. So if anything that can eliminate all humanity all at once, it would be another war. If there were gonna be another large scale of international war, then it would be a nuclear war. Just think about how many nuclear weapons we possess today. So imagine if there were another nuclear war, then all of us would be gone. It would really be the end of the world. And the root cause of this nuclear war would still be because some people could not control the thoughts of anger. They could not control this mental defilements, the poison of anger, the attachment to the thoughts of anger, which eventually lead to a serious range of negative actions which generate negative karma and this creates a vicious cycle and in serious case it may escalate into an international nuclear war uh, this could be possible but of course we do not want that and we hope this will never ever happen in the human history and if it does happen then it will really be the end of humanity and we know what causes this it will still be because some people could not control the mental defilement of anger and all these poisons and without the help of amitabha buddha to help us seek rebirth to the pure land then none of us can actually liberate from the suffering of samsara of the cycle of reincarnation so that is why the buddha says this poison, the poison of anger, is the most dangerous out of all. And it's also one of the most difficult poisons to overcome. Sometimes when we feel like we are so angry, we really lose our rational mind completely, right? All the mindfulness and everything just go out of the window. Sometimes we don't feel like ourselves anymore. It's like we've been possessed by the demons the fire of anger all these demons are also within us although they are illusions in nature but we like to identify with illusions you know we constantly attach to the thoughts of illusions and that is why we suffered so what we can do to overcome anger so in the sutras the buddha tells us that with compassion with loving kindness with metta can help us overcome the thoughts of anger if we can cultivate compassion, then we can really stand in the shoes of others and then we can see things from their perspectives. Perhaps we can better understand where they're coming from. So when we have compassion, we can also forgive and forget what others have done to us. With compassion, we will cultivate patience and forbearance, forgiveness, acceptance endurance and there is no coincidence that in the bodhisattva path the third parameter the third profession is forbearance patience even if we think they're wrong we are really right we can still forgive and forget and just let go of this you know it's much better than to enter into an argument with others why is that because when we hold anger against others you know when we have this fire of anger burning within us who we hurt the most especially ourselves it really damaged our own heart our own mind physical mental spiritual well-being so it's really not worth to hold any anger or grouch against anybody we shall really cultivate more compassion more loving kindness to expand our heart our heart should be as big as the entire universe that we can tolerate everything, to perceive everything as it is. So this can help us overcome the thoughts of anger. Even if it might be difficult for us to extinguish it completely, but what we can do is to at least bring it under control so it doesn't get escalated into any negative action or negative speech that could harm others, which we might regret later. And if we are aware that the thoughts of anger arise, immediately we can practice Nian Fu, reciting the name of Amitabha Buddha as many times as necessary to transform this thought of anger, transform this fire of anger to the fire of awakening, to the fire of Bodhi. In Mahayana Buddhism, there's also a famous saying that afflictions are Bodhi. 
when we are aware we have afflictions, we have thoughts of anger, greed, ignorance, and all this. This is an opportunity for us to be more aware. Ah, again, okay, thoughts of anger is here. The illusion is here. Let me transform this. So the more expanded our awareness is, the easier it is for us to transform this mental defilement. That's why it's very important for us to practice meditation to expand our awareness. And for Neo4 practitioners, it's to practice Amitabha recitation, to practice Neo4, to transform the thoughts of anger into the name of Amitabha Buddha, into infinite light and infinite life, which correspond with our Buddha nature. So we always remember that we are actually the infinite light and the infinite life, the true nature of the self, the true nature of the mind, the true nature of the heart. It's actually infinite light and infinite life. We are not our anger, we're not our greed, we are not our ignorance. You know, all these are just illusions that we should not be attached to them. We should not let them control us. Rather, we should see through the illusions of all these mental defilements and try to transform them into infinite light, infinite life, into the name of Amitabha Buddha. So in the next video, we'll explore the mental defilement of ignorance and also pride and doubt and most importantly, how we can overcome them in our daily life. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha Buddha.